Hi, my name's John Savile and in this video I want to talk about storage spaces, which was a feature originally introduced in Windows Server 2012 and has been built on in Windows Server 2012 R2 with some great new capabilities. Now the main premise of a storage space is we have disks local to a server. So we have our server, and then we have a number of disks attached to it. And traditionally to use this storage, if we wanted any kind of high availability or striping, we would manually create RAID sets, for example. So we may create a mirror. So we would pick two disks and then create a RAID one. And then we could write data to it. If there was a problem, we had to manually add a different disk in, repair the volume. We couldn't do thin provisioning. So the only volumes we could create was where the actual physical space already existed for. We could create RAID 5 so we could have parity, but it was all very manual. Storage spaces change this. So now the idea is, I have that same storage. So I have all my disks, lots and lots of them. And I'm just going to place them into a pool. So this is now just part of a storage space, so I add them to a pool. From that pool, I then create virtual disks. Now this is not a VHD file, it's not a VHDX file. The naming is unfortunate, but I'm creating a virtual disk that's going to be available to the operating system. And maybe each of these disks are 200 gigabytes in size, all of them. So I have 1.6 terabytes of raw storage. And I say, well, I want to create a new virtual disk. So create me a virtual disk. And it's creating it from this pool. But I can do thin provisioning. I can do thick or thin. But I might say, I want a four terabyte disk. I might say, I want that with resiliency of type mirroring or parity. And it will work out, it being storage space technology, which disks it actually needs to use. And if I'm thinly provisioning, it's only going to start using space as I write data to it. Now, if I'm creating a four terabyte, and let's say that's mirrored, obviously for every write it's doing, it's also duplicating the write somewhere else. But the point is, we don't use RAID 1 as the naming, or RAID 5. Because RAID 1 would say, where every bit of data I write to this disk, I'm writing to this disk as well. A storage space doesn't work that way. One block, it may write to this disk, and the mirror of that block might be over here. Then the next block it writes, well, maybe it's on this disk over here, and the mirror block is over here. So it's actually spreading the data over all of the disks, possibly. You don't know. So it's not RAID 1, it's not RAID 5, because it's actually just making sure there is a mirror, or the parity data is written somewhere else. But I can create lots and lots of different virtual disks, some thick, some thin provisioned, and if I'm thin provisioned, as long as I stay ahead of the physical disk usage, I'm fine. So as this grows, as I started to approach the limit of the physical storage, I would just add more disks into this storage pool. If a disk failed, as long as there's enough spare storage, it will just repair. It'll recreate the mirrored blocks, it'll rework out the parity or the missing data. I don't have to manually do anything. So I can thin provision even greater than physically exists, but just stay ahead of that usage. And it's going to warn me as I start getting to that point. So this was a fantastic technology. Thin provisioning, trim support, great features and a new ways to handle that locally attached storage. And this could be clustered. These disks could be in an external storage array, for example. So I might have two nodes in a cluster and they both have a connectivity to that external storage array and clustering support storage spaces so both of them would see all the storage spaces defined. So that's where we were in sort of Windows Server 2012. And this was available in the client operating system as well, so Windows 8 could take advantage of this. So in Windows Server 2012, it's now taking a step further. We now understand the concept of a hard disk drive, so a traditional spinning platter, and a solid state drive. So now we can put these same 
we have the pool. But into the pool, now we're going to have traditional hard disk drives. And we're going to have solid state drives. So we're going to have a mix. So we've got SSD and the traditional hard disk drives. And it can tell, it gets that data from the disk, or I can even manually set its type. So what this now allows us to do is, when I create my virtual disks, the first thing I actually do is I'm gonna create a tier. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and create a hard disk tier. And with that, it's gonna use the hard disk drives. I'm gonna create a solid state tier which will use the solid state drives. Now when I create a virtual disk, I actually tell it, well, how much of each of those tiers do I want to use? So I create my new virtual disk, and I might say, well, you can use 50 gigabytes of solid state tier, and maybe 800 gigabytes of the hard disk drive tier. So now it has these different levels of performance available to it. And what happens is, this technology is monitoring what are the most commonly used blocks going on. So if I have some blocks that are, are highly used, let's say these blocks here, it runs an optimization sequence and it will move the most frequently accessed blocks up into the solid state steer instead. That's gonna give you the best overall performance of this storage. So the most commonly used blocks are now going to be moved to that SSD for really, really fast performance. I can even pin files to that solid state tier. So I can say, well, I always want this file in the solid state tier. I can manually pin it into there. So now, a great overall read and write type performance. But there's something else we can do with these tiers. I can actually enable a write cache. So a write cache says, well, in addition to this virtual disk having this 50 gigs of solid state and this 800 gigs of hard disk drive, I also want, for example, a one gigabyte write cache. So if the tiering gives me an overall great read-write performance by moving the most commonly used box into the solid state, imagine I have a write spike. I have this huge amount of write occurring. Well, the write cache captures that write cache. All those writes will actually get written into this solid state drive up to a gigabyte. So it can absorb that storm of write activity so it won't impact the overall performance and then rewrite those blocks out to maybe the normal hard disk drive tier. It's not gonna affect what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So this ain't optional I can create, I can add in this write cache drive. And it's not a case of which you use, you're probably gonna to wanna to use both of them. I can use the same solid state drives both for my solid state tier and for my write caching. Now you can specify SSD disks as a type journal, but then it can only be used for write cache. So typically we don't want to do that. We'll just make sure we have enough solid state disks, we have enough space, so we can use it for our tier and our write cache. Now I should point out, you cannot use thin provisioning if you use the tiers. So you can't say, I want a 10 terabyte thin provisioned and use 50 gigabytes of SSD tier and 800 gigabytes of hard disk drive. It doesn't work. You're, you're using one or the other. Now the other thing to bear in mind is, I need to make sure I have enough drives in the tier to match the type of resiliency I select. So for example, if I do say I want a new virtual disk and I want mirroring, well I have to make sure I have enough drive to support both the mirroring of the tier of the data, plus mirroring of the write cache. Likewise, if I say I want a three-way mirror or parity, I'd need three drives, for example. So you need to make sure you have enough disks in the tiers to support both the data and the, the resiliency you're selecting for that tier and also for that write cache. So with that, let's actually go and see using this in action in my lab environment. So in my lab environment on this 2012 R2 server, I have four drives I can use in my pool. Two solid state drives and two regular platter drives. And I can see these in my primordial space because I've not actually gone ahead and created a storage space yet. I can see my two SSDs and my two HDD drives. 
And from PowerShell, I've gone ahead and actually create the script. And I'm gonna walk through each of this. So the first command I run is to actually get all the disks that I can pull, and I'm formatting it out as a table format to the name, the status, the size, and the media type. As you can see, I have these two hard disk drives and two solid state drives. Now what I'm gonna do is actually put those into a variable. So it's basically the same command. I don't want any that were unspecified. Now, if you had drives that show unspecified, you can go ahead and set them via the set physical disk command. Set their type to SSD or HDD. Now I'm gonna create a new storage pool using those disks, using the storage spaces technology, and I'm gonna give it a name of my storage pool. Oh, one command. So it's now going ahead and creating my storage pool. And server manager will catch up eventually and I'll see those changes reflected in the GUI as well. And I could do this from the GUI, but I'm gonna focus on the PowerShell. It's a great way to automate things. Now I'm gonna look at that and I can see those disks are now part of my storage pool. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a solid state drive tier. So basically here I'm saying in my storage pool of type SSD, so all the disks that are SSD create a tier called SSD tier. And I'm also storing it in this variable. And then repeating that to create a tier made up of the hard disk drives. So I now have two tiers. Now, normally we could create a new virtual disk and we could say the resiliency type, the size, I could say the provisioning type, like fin for example, but I'm using tiers. I can't set an overall size and I can't set a provisioning type. It's gonna do fat provisioning effectively. I'm gonna create a new virtual disk and I'm gonna store it in this variable. But you can see here, I'm creating it of name tiered space. And I'm using the solid state tier and the hard disk drive tier. Look at that typo. And I'm using 50 gig from the solid state tier, 300 gig from the hard disk drive tier. I want mirroring, so I can only do two-way mirroring because I only have two disks in each of my tiers. And I'm gonna add a write cache tier of one gigabyte. So run this command. Back over here, I can now see my storage pool. And that now shows tiered space allocated. And I now have that tiered disk. Now at this point, I would just go ahead and for example, create disks on it. So I'm gonna do this from PowerShell as well, but I could use Disk Manager. So basically I'm looking for all disks where its petition type is raw, and I'm gonna initialize it as a GPT. So I would see this kick in to Disk Manager. So I now see that there. If it was offline, I could bring it online, but I'm already online from that initialization. Now I'm just gonna create a new drive, a new partition, give it a drive letter M, and then format it. No confirmation. Now it's gonna prompt me to format because I'm creating a partition with a drive letter. So it's gonna ask, do you wanna format it as part of that giving it a drive letter? I'm just gonna cancel that because the next command's gonna do that format volume for me. This is then gonna create that M drive and it's gonna format it NTFS. So that's complete. Next, I'm gonna create a folder called important on that drive. Now I'm gonna copy a file to it. So now what I have is I have my M drive. It's using that tiering and I put one file. Now ordinarily you'd fill this with lots of data. Uh, you might use data deduplication on it to get even better performance. Imagine a VDI scenario where I had 500 client VMs and I was using data deduplication to shrink all those duplicate blocks and how great that would be with tiering. But what I'm actually gonna do is force the file into the tier just to show you the command. So I'm gonna do the set file storage tier, that file, and tell it I want it in the tier of type SSD. Now that doesn't take immediate effect. 
The way this works is periodically, it actually runs a task to optimize the drive for the tiers. I'm gonna force that to run right now. So I can do optimize volume, drive letter, tier optimize. And that's gonna kick off and happen. Now, normally this would happen in the background anyway. So if I actually go ahead and I look at task scheduler and I expand it out, Microsoft Windows Storage Tier Management. I see a task here, so at 1 a.m. every day, it runs a defrag and this basically tells it to optimize the tiers. So by default, that tier optimization, looking at, well, what blocks are the most used, I need to move those around, that's just gonna happen at 1 a.m. every day. But I just forced it to happen right here. And that's it. I'm now using tiering, and that drive would now go and sit in that SSD tier. I could go and look at details of my tiering, but that's it. I mean, that whole process is actually fairly simple. The main part of the work is just creating the storage pool, creating the tiers, and then when you go ahead and create your virtual disk, you just specify how big I want each of the allocation from the tiers to be. I use it, it's gonna move those blocks around in that nightly job based on the usage, or I just manually pin the files there. And that's it. That's what's involved in using the new tiering. And then I've got cleanup code to go and delete all of this for when I have to demo it again. I hope this was useful. Hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the power that's now available as part of the storage spaces give you a phenomenal disk experience, even with direct attached storage. Hopefully I'll see you at some of my online or maybe my in-person events around the US. Check out my blog and my YouTube channel and I appreciate your time. Thank you.